I've got Mel on the line. Mel's the guy with the never-ending hole. Right now, I'm in a little town called Ellensburg. Oh, I know Ellensburg. Oh, you got you. The story of Mel's hole first gained widespread attention in the late 1990s, when a man named Mel Waters appeared on the popular radio program Coast to Coast AM and shared his incredible account of discovering what he believed to be an endless pit on his property in eastern Washington. Mel Waters was a local resident living in a remote, rural area near the town of Ellensburg, Washington. By his own admission, he was not someone who typically sought out the spotlight or made bold claims. However, in 1997, Waters found himself in a situation that would thrust him into the center of one of the most intriguing and enduring paranormal mysteries in recent history. According to Waters, it all started one day when he was out exploring the rugged wilderness near his home. As he was hiking through the dense forests and craggy terrain, he stumbled upon a curious formation in the ground, a hole that seemed to have no visible bottom. Intrigued, Waters decided to investigate further. He began by carefully lowering various objects into the mysterious hole, including rocks, sticks, and even a length of rope. Perplexed and unsettled by this strange phenomenon, Waters continued to explore the site over the following days and weeks. He reported experiencing strange electromagnetic disturbances in the area, as well as an unsettling energy emanating from the hole itself. Waters even went so far as to partially lower himself into the pit on a rope, describing a sense of unease and foreboding as he peered into the abyss. Convinced that he had stumbled upon something truly extraordinary, Waters decided to share his account with the local authorities and the media. However, his claims were often met with skepticism and disbelief. Many were quick to dismiss the story as the product of an overactive imagination or an elaborate hoax. Undeterred, Waters continued to search for answers and eventually found a receptive audience on the popular late-night radio program Coast 2, Coast AM. In 1997, he appeared as a guest on the show, where he recounted his incredible tale of the bottomless pit to the host, Art Bell, and the show's vast audience of late-night listeners. The response was immediate and overwhelming. Callers flooded the phone lines, eager to learn more about this mysterious phenomenon, and the story of Mel's hole quickly became a topic of intense fascination and debate. In this show, Mel was talking about a very deep hole or pit that he found. He described some details about the size and depth of this pit. First, Mel said the pit was around nine feet wide. That means across the opening at the top, the pit measured approximately nine feet from one side to the other. Nine feet is a little less than the length of three normal-sized adult men lying head to toe. So the opening was quite wide, but not enormously huge. Next, Mel mentioned that the pit had a stone retaining wall. A retaining wall is a wall built to hold back soil, rock, or other materials. Usually it is built using stone or concrete blocks stacked on top of each other. So around the edges of this pit was a wall made of stacked stones, perhaps built long ago to reinforce the opening and prevent the sides from crumbling inwards. The most striking detail Mel provided was about the incredible depth of this pit. He said he was unable to measure how deep it went, even after lowering over 15 miles of fishing line straight down into it. Let me put that incredible depth into perspective. 15 miles is an astonishingly long distance. It would take over four hours to walk that far at a normal pace. Extending a fishing line that lengthy is already difficult to comprehend. But the fact that the line didn't hit bottom even after being lowered that incredible distance means the pit plunges deeper into the earth than most people can realistically imagine. For comparison, the deepest hole ever dug by humans is the Kola Superdeep Borehole in Russia, which achieved a depth of around 7.5 miles. But this pit that Mel found appears to be at least twice as deep as that. It's an almost inconceivable depth. Most buildings are less than half a mile high. The cruising altitude for commercial airplanes is around 6 to 7 miles up. 
Even the height of the boundary between the Earth's atmosphere and outer space is only about 60 miles up. So 15 miles is staggeringly, mind-bogglingly deep for a hole or pit in the ground. Perhaps this pit is an ancient underground cave or sinkhole that has been eroded over millions of years to extend incredibly far into the Earth's crust. Or maybe it is a borehole or vertical mine shaft from an ancient civilization with capabilities. Far beyond our own. But for Mel to be unable to find the bottom even with over 15 miles of line is nearly unbelievable. Frankly, if not for the specific details Mel provided about the width and retaining wall, it would be easy to dismiss his claim as a tall tale or exaggeration. After all, most people have never seen a hole more than a few hundred feet deep. A 15-mile deep pit seems far too outrageous to be real. But with those tangible details he gave, it becomes harder to simply write it off as fiction or a case of mistaken measurements. Mel seems to have genuinely discovered a remarkably deep, mysterious pit that may plunge so far down that its bottom has yet to be reached. In addition to the incredible depth of the pit that Mel discovered, some very strange and unexplained things were reported happening in the area around the pit. These bizarre occurrences made the pit seem even more mysterious and abnormal. As usual, I brought the dogs with me. Uh, they wouldn't go anywhere near the damn thing, and if I try to bring them there on a leash, they'll just dig their feet and they do not want to go anywhere near the hole. The one guy claims that he threw his uh, departed canine down into the hole. Oh, really? And uh, he swears the, the dog actually came back to him. Their powerful sense of smell draws them to explore interesting sights and scents. However, Mel's dogs acted completely out of character when it came to this pit. Instead of being curious and wanting to sniff around the opening, they stayed completely away and refused to even approach the area where the pit was located. Their behavior suggested they could sense something about the pit that made them afraid or unwilling to get close to it. Or maybe they could sense some kind of supernatural force or energy surrounding the pit that humans cannot perceive. Whatever the reason, their unusual behavior of refusing to go near it added to the sense of mystery. The second weird incident involved a neighbor's dog that had apparently died and was thrown into the pit, but then emerged completely unharmed. At first glance, for a dead dog to be thrown into a pit of such staggering depth seems like its body should have been damaged or at least caused serious injuries. No animal could possibly survive a fall from 15 miles up. But it was rather surprising that such depth rather gave life an animal. However, this dog came out from the pit alive. It's hard to imagine how that could be possible unless the pit had some kind of sloped or angled passage rather than a straight vertical drop. Or perhaps there are tunnels or cave systems branching off from the main pit that allowed the dog to exit from a different location. It's also strange that the neighbor's dog was in the pit in the first place and managed to find its own way out. But when it returned, it was quite unfortunate that it couldn't recognize its master or any other person it knew before, but all its features remained unchanged. Taken together, these two bizarre occurrences Mel's dogs showing an innate fear of the pit area, and a neighboring dog thrown into the hole but came back alive contribute an air of unearthly mystery. They suggest that something highly unusual and abnormal may be happening with this pit. While the widespread attention helped spread information, it also had unintended consequences. Now that millions knew about the anomalous hole, many people wanted to see it for themselves. Helicopters began hovering near Mel's property, as both civilians and government officials sought to investigate the bizarre pit. The hole and the area around it soon faced increased scrutiny and interaction from outsiders. This extra attention is what ultimately led to authorities becoming directly involved. Their intervention would further shroud the case in mystery. But for now, Mel was simply glad to have a platform to share his story and get guidance from others on how to solve the incredible puzzle. In the days following Mel's appearance on Coast to Coast AM, even more strange events began occurring near the mysterious hole. Mel claimed that one of his neighbors spotted an unusual black beam emanating up from the pit and cutting across the sky. Listeners of the radio program also started providing context about the area's history. They said that region of Washington was well known for UFO sightings and paranormal phenomena over the years. 
disappearances had been reported there as well. Mel arranged to return to Coast to Coast AM and give an update. But on the scheduled night, he failed to call into the program as planned. Now deeply worried for his safety, Art and others from the show decided to travel to Mel's property themselves. When they arrived though, they were met with an even bigger shock. According to Mel's precise descriptions, there was no visible hole to be found. All that remained was disturbed earth, as if the pit had been deliberately filled in. In its place were clues of organized military activity on the land, a very strange and unsettling situation developed the very next day involving the military. When Art Bell and his team found no trace of the hole, but instead saw signs of military activity on Mel's property, it raised serious questions. What had really happened in the days since Mel's radio appearance? Not long after, some answers began emerging when Mel finally contacted Art again. Mel reported that upon returning home after the show, he found his property blocked off by armed personnel. They claimed an aircraft had crashed on his land, but Mel knew of no such incident. Strangely still, the men preventing Mel's access threatened to seize his property. They hinted false charges could be brought against him if he didn't comply. Furious yet fearful, Mel vowed to go public with his experience. But without proof, no one would believe him over government forces, Military personnel showed up and completely blocked all access to Mel's property where the pit was located, as they claimed that their reason for restricting access was because a plane had crashed somewhere on or near Mel's land. If a plane had actually crashed in that area, it would make sense for the military to respond quickly and secure the scene for investigation and recovery efforts. Clearing civilians away would be standard operating procedure. But here's where it gets strange. Mel himself stated that he saw absolutely no evidence whatsoever that a plane had actually crashed anywhere on his property. There were no wreckage remains, no scorched areas, no debris fields, nothing at all to indicate a plane went down. Mel surely would have noticed something like that, especially if the supposed crash site was close enough to the pit that the military felt compelled to block it off too. The lack of any plane crash evidence directly contradicted the military's claimed reason for restricting access to his land. It showed directly that these military personnel were determined to seize Mel's property due to all these claims they attributed. With his land and safety now under threat, Mel faced a difficult decision. Should he stand up to the mysterious forces and risk further danger, or reluctantly accept their terms? Events were taking a dire turn, and the truth behind the anomalous hole seemed destined to remain buried. Mel found himself in an incredibly difficult position given the threats and intimidation tactics being used against him. Facing the prospect of losing everything, he decided to reluctantly cooperate with the mysterious forces for the time being. So this raised a lot of questions. If no plane actually did crash there, why would the military make that claim as an excuse to take control of Mel's property? What was their real motivation for suddenly wanting to prevent anyone from accessing the area around the pit just one day after Mel's weird story about it went public? A few days later, Mel received an unexpected offer to lease his property to the government for an enormous annual sum of nearly $3 million. However, there was a major catch. As part of the deal, Mel would have to immediately sign a non-disclosure agreement, pack up, and leave the country permanently without returning. Feeling he had no other choice, Mel took the deal. He departed the United States and settled in Australia, keeping silent about his experiences per the agreement. For years, it seemed his strange saga was finished. However, Mel's story was not over. Individuals try to understand why military personnel would seize someone's property while preventing the person from entering, without any crime charged against the person. One possibility is that the military's true intent was to investigate and secure the pit itself after hearing Mel's outlandish claims about its extreme depth that seemed to defy reason or logic. Perhaps they wanted scientists and researchers to study it without outside interference or scrutiny. Another unsettling possibility is that the military already knew about this pit's existence from previous measurements or encounters, and they wanted to restrict access because it related to some kind of classified operation, experiment, or other clandestine activity in that area. The pit may have been off-limits for security reasons unrelated to a fake plane crash. Alternatively, 
Maybe the pit acted as some kind of entry point or passage to an underground military base or facility that they didn't want civilians accidentally stumbling upon and exposing. The depths could conceal all kinds of secret tunnels and chambers. Or perhaps the military presence was meant to silence Mel himself after he disclosed information he shouldn't have on the radio. Shutting down access could have been a tactic to cut off his ability to share more, or even detain him through misleading pretenses. Regardless of the exact reason, the military's highly irregular reaction and clear dishonesty about a non-existent plane crash happening created an atmosphere of great suspicion about what they were actually trying to do or cover up in that location. The fact that it came immediately after Mel's interview about the Pitt's bizarre properties strongly implies some direct connection to his discovery. After Mel shared the details about the extremely deep pit on his property, and the military took strange actions to restrict access to the area, Several theories began circulating to try to explain what the pit actually was, or where it could lead. One theory was that the pit was actually the opening to a massive volcanic cave or lava tube. These are natural cave systems formed by flows of lava that leave behind an emptied underground tunnel or channel once the lava drains away. Some of the longest lava tubes on Earth extend for many miles underground. The thinking was that this pit could be a vertical shaft that opened up into a huge subterranean lava tube cavity that extended far beneath the surface. This might explain why Mel was unable to find the bottom even after dropping over 15 miles of line down it. The pit just kept going deeper into a cavernous lava tube system. Another theory linked the pit to the hollow earth hypothesis. This is an ancient idea that the earth is actually hollow inside, with the surface being merely an outer shell surrounding a hidden interior region within. Some versions of the theory propose there could even be whole other realms or civilizations living inside this inner hollow space. Those subscribing to this hollow earth theory speculated that the pit might be a tunnel or passage that could lead through the outer crust and allow access into the mythical hollow innermost region at the center of the planet. Its unfathomable depth seemed to align with the idea of it plunging towards this supposed inner world. A third theory emerged that the pit was actually an entrance of some kind connected to a secret underground base or facility operated by the government. This speculation arose from the military's highly suspicious actions of blocking off access to Mel's property under false pretenses shortly after he went public with information about the pit. The theory proposed that the pit's incredible depth and the military's clear interest in securing the area indicated it must have been related to some kind of top-secret government project, base, or installation located far beneath the surface for secrecy and security. Perhaps the pit allowed entry into these underground facilities for research, operations, or even housing of classified personnel and equipment away from civilian knowledge. Adding credence was the pit's reported proximity to an existing military base in the area. This close location made sense if the pit's underground tunnels stretched towards secure military facilities nearby designed to conceal highly classified work, testing, or activities from outside view. As more time passed after Mel's initial discovery of the extremely deep pit on his property, even more outlandish and bizarre claims began surfacing that associated the pit with a wide range of paranormal and fringe phenomena. These reports took the mystery and strangeness surrounding the pit to an entirely new level. One of the most unsettling claims was that people in the vicinity of the pit started experiencing bizarre distortions or anomalies related to the flow of time itself. Accounts emerged of clocks running inaccurately, with the perception that time seemed to either speed up, slow down, or become distorted in inexplicable ways when near the pit's location. Some theorized that the pit's incredible depth could be warping gravity fields or interacting with the space-time continuum in a manner that disrupted the normal progression and measurement of time's passage in the surrounding area. These time distortion effects fueled suggestions that the pit could actually be some kind of wormhole or portal into another dimension or reality where the laws of physics differed. Adding to those fringe ideas were reported sightings of unidentified flying objects, or UFOs, being observed around the pit at various times. Multiple witnesses claimed to see strange lights or craft-like objects hovering silently over or descending into the pit before vanishing, seemingly without terrestrial origin. This led to hypotheses that the pit may be some kind of launch-slash-retrieval site for alien spacecraft, or perhaps even a multidimensional gateway enabling interdimensional travel between our world and wherever the mysterious objects were coming from. 
the pit's reality-defying depths made it a theoretical possibility. Even more bizarre were stories that began circulating about alleged interdimensional communications being received by certain individuals in relation to the pit. These claimed to be ominous warnings about doomsday events or cataclysmic Earth changes being forecast to occur in the future, with the pit being a critical nexus point. The supposed communications variously described the pit leading to the opening of a hellmouth, a merging of parallel universes, or facilitating the arrival of destructive alien or extradimensional forces that would bring about the apocalypse or an extinction event. Unsurprisingly, these far-fetched tales generated fear and panic among susceptible audiences. It's important to note that all these theories came up and was discussed after Mel Waters left the United States. However, since Mel Waters did show up again for almost a decade, discussions concerning the hole started dying out. This led to much more speculation if the hole actually existed. However, not long after, almost about two years after relocating, he began missing his family still living in the US. Despite the risks, Mel covertly returned to visit them. But during this trip, another strange series of events would further cement the mysterious nature of his case. Upon arriving back in America, Mel planned to give Art Bell an update on the radio show. But on the scheduled night, he once again failed to call in. He then mysteriously lost over a week of time, waking up hundreds of miles from where he intended to be. When Mel suddenly regained consciousness in San Francisco with no recollection of how he got there, it only added to the strangeness of his situation. Even more disturbing was his physical condition, with needle marks, missing teeth, and pain in his arm. It seemed some kind of medical procedure had been performed on him against his will. But by whom and for what purpose remained a mystery. With his memory of the past 12 days completely erased, Mel had no answers. To make matters worse, he soon found himself in legal trouble back in Washington. Though he hadn't been there in years, Mel was being falsely charged with crimes like illegal construction on his old property. It appeared the mysterious forces were still actively working to ruin him. Word of these new troubling developments eventually reached Art Bell. Knowing Mel's credibility from their initial contacts, Art helped spread awareness of Mel's dire circumstances. This may have offered him some protection from further harassment. However, Mel had also clearly made new powerful enemies by his continued efforts to share his experience. It seemed they would stop at nothing to discredit and dispose of him. Despite silenced for years, Mel's story was only just beginning its next strange chapter. The full truth of what lies beneath the land, and the forces working so hard to bury the matter, continue to evade full disclosure to this day. Even with Art Bell's help broadcasting Mel's plight, he remained in danger from the mysterious entities that had targeted him. Facing uncertain safety if he stayed in the US, Mel made the difficult choice to flee the country once more. He secretly left North America and disappeared, going into long-term hiding in an unknown location. For nearly a decade, Mel maintained absolute silence about his experiences. All contact with the outside world ceased. During this time in seclusion, the true scale of the cover-up surrounding Mel's anomalous hole came into clearer focus. Investigations found that government records of his property, along with any photographic and physical evidence, had all been deliberately wiped from existence. It seemed immense effort was undertaken to rewrite history and ensure not even traces of documentation linking back to Mel's discovery could be found. The area itself showed signs of remediation, leaving no signs the reported hole was ever there. The level of revisionism implied this was no ordinary case. Powerful entities had intervened to systematically erase what Mel had uncovered on his land from all official records. Their motives remain deeply shrouded in mystery to this day. While in hiding, Mel had ample time to reflect on his experiences and what they could potentially mean. After so long away from the public eye, he would eventually resurface with a new perspective to share. But that story will have to wait to be continued another time. In 2016, Nearly two decades after his initial encounter, Mel Waters finally emerged from seclusion. He reached out to a private researcher who had been investigating his case for years. Mel was ready to cautiously share more of what he knew. 
Under conditions of anonymity, Mel granted the researcher an exclusive interview. He recounted more vivid details of the strange events that followed his radio appearances, including blacking out and waking with injuries. Mel also shared new insights he had gained over his long period of isolation. Based on historical records of the area he examined, Mel came to believe the hole on his land was no naturally occurring phenomenon. Rather, it seemed to be evidence of an intelligently engineered structure of immense proportions. In recent years, the intrigue surrounding Mel's hole has been reignited by the emergence of new evidence. In 2021, a group of drone operators claim to have captured aerial footage of the site, which they say reveals even more puzzling and unsettling details. The footage appears to show the hole emitting a strange, pulsing light or energy, as well as strange atmospheric disturbances in the area. This has only served to deepen the mystery and fuel further speculation about the true nature of Mel's hole. What are your thoughts about this mysterious hole? Let us know in the comments section below.